Hey guys! Today's video is going to be all about houseplant care tips during the winter time specifically. I have 15 care tips included in this video that will hopefully help keep the plant fam alive and thriving during these cold and very dark winter months hopefully. So if your plants have been struggling a little bit during this winter season, then hopefully some of these tips can help turn that around and maybe give you some insights onto what to watch for in your plants. So with that being said, let's just get into it. Move your high light loving plants closer to light sources. This is one I never really used to think of, but this year I have kind of kept this in mind more and I've noticed my plants doing significantly better this winter than past winters. The sun exposure during the winter time just isn't as strong as in the summer. And there's also less sunlight during the winter. Like it pretty much is dark all the time it feels like. By moving our plants closer to light sources, such as windows, grow lights, things like that, then our plants will be a lot happier. My next tip is kind of one I don't personally follow 100%, but it's to not fertilize your plants. I don't follow this one in cases where my plants continually grow during the winter. So plants like my peperomia, pothos, philodendron, other plants that just keep pushing out growth during the cold months, I will continue to fertilize very, very lightly. I'll dilute the fertilizer I use to like quarter strength and just fertilize with that just so they aren't using up all of their energy pushing out that new growth and then die just if i'm noticing signs of growth will i fertilize but for all of my other plants if they aren't showing active signs of new growth then i am going to not fertilize even a single time during the winter months they're needing that rest they're not going to continue pushing out that new growth um, which is why I won't fertilize yet. If you do decide to fertilize some of your plants, be very careful about this because it, if we are over fertilizing in the months when they're not growing, it can actually burn their root systems or their foliage, um, just cause issues down the road with their growth cycle and things like that. Don't repot your plants if possible. So of course there are going to be some situations where our plants just kind of grew out of control and we didn't really notice it. So we're going to have to repot and there's no way around that. The only time I really would repot a plant during the winter month is if I bought the plant from somewhere where I don't trust the soil they use or if I'm noticing the pot really bulging or the roots are growing out of the drainage holes in the bottom of the pot. Then I would go ahead and repot it right away. But other than that, I'm going to let my plants live in their homes until late, late winter, early springtime, and then go ahead and repot from there. So this one kind of goes against the very first tip I said, which was to move our plants closer to light sources, such as windows. But some plants, even high light loving plants, we may need to move away from windows. The reason for that is especially if you live somewhere extremely cold, like where I live, where it gets below freezing consistently, uh, it drops pretty low during the winter time, especially during the night, the glass can get very cold and damage the foliage of the plant. It can actually like frost burn the leaves. It usually ends up looking like brown or black spots on the foliage. That can mean that your plant got too cold and it may have been touching that freezing glass. So if you move the plant back even, a few inches or a foot away, a foot back from the window, it can make all the difference in keeping your plant happy. And on that same note is to move your plants away from any cold or hot drafts. Things like, I don't know if you have a crack in a window or something and cold air is blowing through, your plants aren't really going to like that. They're also not going to like if they're sitting next to a heat vent and hot air is constantly being blown onto them. And that will also make it so you have to water the plant more frequently which can be tough to keep up with sometimes. I made that mistake once and ended up underwatering the plant through the winter and it was very, very sad. Something very, very beneficial you can do for your plant is provide them with some aeration. So if you have a ceiling fan or just little fans you can move around your house and turn on here and there, it can really, really help keep your plants happy. Usually during the winter, people don't keep their windows open so the air is just kind of stagnant. Plants don't really love that. So by turning on the fans and letting airflow happen, it can help prevent things like root rot. It can also help pests off of our plants, keep them off of the plants. And then you don't have to worry as much about overwatering those plants. In a case where you accidentally give them too much water, that airflow is going to help aerate that soil. 
and dry it out a bit more quickly. Clean your windows. This is kind of a small thing you can do that can make such a huge difference. If you're able to go to your windows and wipe down the inside and outside of the windows with some sort of cleaner to get off that extra dust. When that extra film is formed on our windows, it's less light is able to get through the glass to our actual plants. So by wiping that off the windows, you're giving them that little extra little extra dosage of light that they may not have gotten otherwise. This next one kind of depends on where you live, but again, where I live in Utah, we're running our heat vents pretty much all the time during the winter and it really, really dries out the air. I do whatever I can to increase the humidity in my home. Currently I'm keeping my house between 45 to 50% humidity. I'll link this in the description, but I actually have this little sensor that tells us what the humidity currently is. So it's actually 54% humidity today because it's a bit of a warmer day outside. So the heat hasn't had to run as much. If it got any higher than this, I would maybe run a dehumidifier or something because you do also have to worry about mold. That's not something a lot of people really talk about when they talk about humidity, especially if it's cold outside and humid inside, then the humidity is going to condensate on different surfaces and it really can cause a lot of structural damage to your floors and walls and windows and the foundation of the house, really the bones of the house. So be very careful about having too much humidity, but a really good trick to, to keep the humidity like localized to your plants specifically is A, you can keep your plants grouped together, put all your humidity loving plants together and get them their own little humidifier. There are some excellent, excellent humidifiers you can get online. I'll link a few of my favorites down below. I have the large Lavoie humidifier, but they do also have some really excellent small ones as well. So I will link those down below if you wanna give them a shot. If you keep the humidity loving plants grouped together with a humidifier, then you're not going to have to run the humidifiers often. You're just kind of running it for those plants if you know what I mean. I do also have a video all about how to increase humidity in your home without a humidifier. So I will link that in the description box if you wanna watch that video with some little tips and tricks you can try to increase the humidity. This next one can actually be a little bit tricky and it is to adjust your watering. In most situations, we're going to have to water our plants less during the winter months. But if you live somewhere extremely dry or your plants are near air vents where warm air is being blown around pretty much all the time, like in my house, some of my plants I do end up watering actually more frequently during the winter time because the heat being blown on them all the time really, really dries them out. So it's extremely important to keep an eye on your plants, especially during those first few weeks of the winter months when your heat is running so that you can kind of gauge if you're going to need to decrease water or increase water. Something that really, really helps me, I don't necessarily use this during the warm months all the time, but in the winter time, this puppy comes in so handy. Again, I will link it in the description if you wanna get one for yourself. It's around $10, maybe even a little bit less. It is a moisture meter. So during the winter, this makes such a difference and it helps me not over or underwater my plants. And I'm very diligent about using this during these cold months. Rotate your plants. The reason rotating your plants is really important during the winter, in most cases, some cases the plants don't really care, but one side of your plant is probably getting more light than the other side of your plant, and that can cause extremely stunted growth on one side, cause that one side of the plant to be more unhealthy than the other side. So by quarter rotating your plant, so rotating it just about 90 degrees, every couple of weeks or so is really going to help your plant grow evenly on all sides. I know some people don't really mind if it's not even growth all around, but your plant will, in most cases, really appreciate it if you're able to do that. Um, you don't wanna rotate the plant too much, like completely around, because especially if all the foliage is like pressing itself, trying to find the light and you turn it around, then that foliage isn't as close to the light source that they need, so they aren't able to absorb light for energy as adequately, if that makes any sense at all. My brain just kind of went black. <laughs> so yeah, rotate your plants every few weeks about a quarter turn. Be sure you're watering your plant with room temperature water. I find that especially during the winter months, it's very important. My plants do tend to go into shock a little bit more. I'm noticing if I water them with cold water straight from my fridge filter. So what I'll do is I just have this large pitcher, I'll fill up with, with my filtered water and I'll let it sit 
out like overnight and I'll do the watering in the morning with the room temperature water. Of course, in like dire situations where you're noticing your plant is burning to a crisp, drying to a crisp, you can go ahead and use your cold water, but really that's just in a pinch. It will keep your plants a lot more happy if you're using a more room acclimated temperature water. Don't, don't wanna shock those roots. It is so important to keep a close watch on your plants, especially during the winter months when humidity is down, the air sits more still, and we're not really having to care for our plants as much because pests really tend to flock to plants when they are sitting in a dry environment. Really, really important to keep a really good watch on them because especially during the winter, the pests come out and they can take over very, very quickly, especially if you're leaving your plants grouped very closely together. You're going to want to inspect your plants at least every few days if possible. I try and inspect mine every single day, and what I'll do is I'll actually turn on the flashlight on my cell phone and look over the plants with the flashlight. It actually helps, even during the daytime for some reason, it actually really helps be able to spot any discolorations or little bugs that may be hiding in the crevices of the plant. So I highly recommend using a flashlight to do that. Clean your plant leaves. You can just take a microfiber cloth or something and wipe them down with water. A, this can help prevent pests. And again, it's just another reason to kind of get up close and personal with your plants to be able to watch for pests that may be hiding on your plant. Uh, you can wipe them off really quick, solve the problem before it gets out of control and it's stressful to deal with. Also, it's important to clean your plant leaves. For the same reason, we want to clean the windows. A film on your plant leaves inhibit the plant from absorbing the sun rays. During the winter, when it's dark all the time, they need as much sun as they can possibly get. So just by wiping that dust off the leaves, it can make such a big difference for the plant. Next is to consider grow lights or heat mats in situations where necessary. Uh, sometimes plants just need higher temperatures than you're able to get them. So a heat mat can really make all the difference. I'll link my favorite one in the description box if you're interested in trying it. And also kind of along that note is you can, you can provide them with grow lights, which of course is going to make such a big difference. I have always been really intimidated by grow lights. I don't know why. A really awesome option you can try it that's probably one of the more inexpensive options is by switching out your household bulbs or some lamps you have sitting around to daylight LED bulbs. These will provide the plants with the light, the extra lighting they need to really thrive during the winter months. If you can stand that bright of light, you could change like your ceiling lights to that brightness, although it is a little bit harsh on the eyes to have going 24 seven. So maybe that's not the best option. Maybe you should just try getting a few little lamps that you can turn on here and there so you don't burn your corneas. Your plants will really love it, and you can just get those daylight LED bulbs pretty much from any store like Home Depot, Lowe's, they have them at Walmart, and they are fairly inexpensive compared to plant-specific grow lights you can buy online. So I highly recommend trying that out. Next is to let your plant go dormant, which I know can be so scary and st so stressful. Once you notice your plant declining or like losing all its leaves, looking very, very sad, but some plants need this during the winter time so that they're able to really flourish during the growing season. So what this really comes down to is knowing, knowing about the plants you have in your collection. The one that really comes to mind is like Oxalis. Seems like some people are able to keep them going year round, but I never was able to. So these are bulb plants and they do they do die back during the winter. So when I first had my oxalis, I didn't know much about it and it just started to, it really started to die during the cold months. And I thought I was doing something wrong, but really I wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just going to, it was just going dormant. When it started going dormant, I kind of panicked and I over cared for it and I ended up actually killing the bulbs. So if I had just ignored it through the winter time, it would have come back in the springtime, but I didn't know that I should be watching for dormancy on that plant. Lesson learned, know your plants, do some research before you buy them or immediately after you buy your plants about their growing season, their growing cycle. This last tip is the one I probably struggle with the most and it is to avoid trimming your plants during the winter if possible. Trimming ugly growth or even uh, taking propagation cuttings if possible. I really, really struggle with this one. I just always wanna be cutting my plants. I don't know why that's so backwards and weird, but 
For some reason during the winter, I just want to propagate all of my plants all of a sudden. And you can propagate during the winter. The propagations typically don't do as well during the cold winter months as they would during the summer growing season months. But also if you're taking cuttings from your plant, it can actually send your plant further into shock uh, if they're having to kind of use extra energy to because it's cold during the during the winter or they're not getting enough light that really can send them into a shock and in some cases can kill your plants if you're taking too many cuttings too frequently from your plant. Just be a little bit wary about that. Like I'm not saying we can't take cuttings from the plant. Of course we can do whatever we want with our plants. Definitely isn't ideal for plant health to be taking cuttings all the time during the winter. So those were all 15 tips I'll be including in this video. Please leave a comment sharing your best winter plant care tip with the rest of us. It's very much appreciated. And like I said, any products I mentioned in the video will be linked in the description box if you wanna try them for yourself. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.